Hi, I'm Sherry Truler with Red Apple Auctions. Let's set up the scenario here. Let's say that you have agreed to chair your annual nonprofits fundraiser or school auction fundraiser. You're excited. You've got some ideas. Maybe your best friend is going to help you out. One of the things that you're going to do first, because you haven't worked with the auctioneers before, is you want to call around and find out some different auctioneers and what they offer and how much it costs, all that sort of thing. Stop. Do not pick up the phone until you are very clear about one thing. And that thing is, why the heck are you having this event? Why? Why? It's such a simple question that leads to such complex answers. You know, when I was at George Washington University in their event management certificate program, the first class, the very first thing that we learned as professional event planners is that you don't start doing anything with your event until you understand why you're having the event in the first place. But yet with many groups, the why is muddy. Nobody really knows why or they're afraid to state it. Let me give you some examples here. When I get a phone call from someone, I like to spend about 40 minutes on the phone talking about the event. If they've had one in the past, what worked, what didn't work, what kind of things that they've done, what things that they liked, all of that. One of the reasons, or one of the questions that I ask, what is, what's the event for? Why are you having it? And very often the answer is, oh, we want to raise money for XYZ charity. We want to raise money. But if I start digging deeper and asking other questions, I find out that that's not really the reason. That's the high-level reason. That's the throwaway answer. But oftentimes it comes down to these completely other motives that I don't find out until I start asking questions. So what I wanted to do is encourage you to be honest with your auctioneer and talk about why you're having the event. So what I've done is I've jotted down some of the reasons, the ulterior motives, if you will, were why people have an auction that would be important to share with your auctioneer. Because if you do, you're going to have a much better relationship. The auctioneer isn't going to waste your time telling you to do things that aren't going to help you reach your goal. And you're going to have an easier relationship. This is better for you if you know up front. So let's kind of go through some things. First off, Pressure from donor. There are sometimes a group, <clears throat> in fact, one of the groups I worked with a couple of years ago, for the very first time that they'd done a live auction, they'd never done a live auction before, I said, well, <clears throat> what is it that you, why are you having this auction? Pressure from a donor. Someone had donated a fabulous trip. It was overseas, seven days. The donor would not donate it unless they had a live auction because they knew it would sell for a lot more in the live auction than in the silent. So the real reason that they were having the live auction was strictly to please the donor. Okay, good. That helps me plan. So that's one reason that uh, one one motive that I've heard. Honor a local hero. Sometimes the event is not so much about raising money. It's more about honoring someone who has already given a lot of money. Sometimes these are even set up as roasts. So you'll have a number of speakers get up and in a fun way tease the honoree. And then as part of that, you will have an auction as well. The focus isn't on the auction. The focus is on honoring the local hero. And if I know that going into it, I'm not going to suggest something that takes away from the hero. Can you imagine if I go in and start explaining all these things that can be done to raise money, but they detract from honoring the hero? That's going to go over like a lead brick. So if I know that this is the focus, there's certain things that I'm just not going to suggest because I'm not going to waste their, your time, the committee's time, or even make me myself look like a fool because I don't understand what the purpose of the event is. Number three, tradition. Tradition. I had one group that I talked to say, look, our patrons have given a lot of money throughout the year. We don't want you to beat them over the head asking for money at the auction, as if I would beat them over the head. We just want to have a nice event, fun little auction. But, you know, this is tradition. This event has been popular for a long time, and don't beat the money out of the guests. Okay. All right. Tells me how we're doing the event. Makes it a lot easier for all of us. Number four, it's a friendly function. Friendly function. Um, I had a group tell me once, you know, it's, it was a church, 
and they're like, you know, we want to get everybody together. We want to have a social function while everybody's together. We don't see a problem with raising a little bit of money through an auction, so that's what we want to do. But this is about just having some fun and getting some interaction going. And, you know, the focus here isn't all on, on trying to make money. It's just one of the many activities we'll be doing. Perfect. Okay, it's a friendly function. Now I understand my role. Next is the image. The image. One group told me that this event has been going on for eternity and it will continue on for eternity and everybody comes to this event because it's a very popular, prestigious event. People will spend money whether we care or not, they will spend money. So it was this image thing. It's like they didn't want to embarrass themselves in the auction, but the auction wasn't where all the focus was. People were going to be there to be seen was more or less where it was coming from. So that put the focus in perspective. Volunteer involvement is the next one down. Uh, one group that I worked with, they said, you know, we don't make a lot of money in the auction. We never have. But, you know, we've got these women and they like to clean out their closets and bring things to the auction. Ugh, that's not a great way to make money. But again, the focus was different. So what we do is we just all get together and we have this fun event. But it's all about honoring these volunteers because they love to do this. And they feel like they're making a difference. So we want to continue it for them. <laughs> Okay, that's what the event's about. And then finally, of course, is about making money. And if I'm working with a group, and oftentimes they're, they're uh, like first time out schools, maybe who are doing an auction for the very first time, and they're like, Sherry, we need $50,000 to save our music program, or we've got to have $100,000 because this program that we have for the homeless kids is going to go away unless we raise that money. You know, I know that whatever I suggest that's going to help them make money, they're going to do it. They're going to rearrange the program. They're going to pull different speakers. They are going to make that work because the goal is to make money. So therefore, I'm going to be very strategic in what I suggest because I understand. I'm Sherry with Red Apple Auctions, and if you are looking for great information on how to improve your benefit auction in whatever capacity you're aiming to do, uh, you can visit the web website. We have a free gift out there. It's called our Auction Item Guide. It lists the top 100 items that we are selling for over their value in benefit auctions today. So if you're looking for some new ideas, some fresh ideas, creative things, why don't you go ahead and get that. Just give me your email and I'll instantly send it out to you so you can share that at your next procurement meeting. Hey, thanks for watching and good luck to you in your auction.